Michael, Jim, and Brian. Wow, what a film. Wow. All right. Um, Jim, you said that when you first read this, you thought, what's happening? So when was the moment when it clicked and you went, I get it and I'm in? Um, there were a couple of things. Number one was I talked to the director, Joe Mantello, and I told him what you repeated, which is like, I'm not sure I understand what's happening here. And he said, mm -hmm. read it again and read it through the lens like it's an Edward Albee play, which I think Ryan Murphy had said to Joe himself. And that really framed it for me. And I think one of the reasons that keeps coming up is that a lot of Edward Albee's work represented a lot of things going on in a gay life, but through the lens of a straight couple and a, a heterosexual lifestyle. But it was dealing with a lot of gay issues. And this tale was only different in that it was head on gay people dealing with gay issues. But when I thought about some of the bigger moments in this, the darker moments, saying it was like a version of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf say, things began to make sense. And I understood the theatricality behind it. And I couldn't wait at that point to take part in some of these really roller coaster scenes. Uh, that was really exciting to me. Brian, this really is a gorgeous theatrical piece. So how different was it taking it from the stage to the screen? Um, a lot different in some ways in that, you know, technically we're so used to projecting in the theater. We do it for over 800 people every night. And so there was that sense. Sometimes you really feel like you're at full volume, even when, you know, Jim and I are across the room in a bedroom that's upstairs on a set. And so it does feel sometimes it can be very um, uh, uh, jarring in a way to to go through that and then and then do the film where everything is taken down and almost whispered and you can do so much with a glance or a look down um, or a sip of your drink and you can get all these moments across that in the theater are impossible so that was an adjustment but it seemed to work out really well and uh, and it was a lot of fun to to you know do it in a different medium. Michael this was um a heartbreaking film. I, I don't want to say it was that all the time because I was entertained and had laughs along the way as well. But there was a line that uh, your character delivered and he said, he was talking about his relationship with Emery, his friendship with Emery. And he says, I don't like it from him and I don't like it from me, but I do it to myself and I let him do it because it's the only thing to him that makes him my equal. And I that line has just been resonating with me a lot because it's something that we all do for different reasons. When you added that line, what did you think as you were delivering it? And did it make you reflect on some of the interactions you've had with people? Absolutely. Well, the great thing about this production, the Joe Mantello revival of Boys in the Band, is he went outside of default white casting with the role of Emery, who's always been played by a white actor, and found a Latin actor to play it. Therefore, the dynamic between this black man shifts versus it being about a white guy and standing up to it. It becomes about, as men of color, I let him do it because on the totem pole, I still think I rank higher than him. I still think because I can pass and I'd rather be this than that, it becomes this totem pole uh, positioning game and of class and status. And I think we all do that in different ways, but right now we're having this huge moment of Black Lives Matter and trying to get Black folks to also say Black Trans Lives Matter. But sometimes the, the, where you rank yourself on the totem pole determines whether or not you're able to really be inclusive. So yeah. we're all at fault in this play, I think. Oh, we are. Uh, def and guess what? And in this life as well. Some yeah. of us more than others, though. Um, as I said, lots of heartbreaking lines. For me, when Hank says, I always labelled it something else or denied it completely. And then there came a time where I couldn't lie to myself anymore. Hearing that as a heterosexual woman upsets me because I'm thinking, wow, there's someone out there who can't live their true lives. And Jim, when you came into this industry, did you feel like you could be your true self? Or did you feel a bit like Hank where you had to keep a bit to yourself so you could get the parts you wanted to get? Um, it was sort of a double-edged thing or a two-sided thing. I didn't feel that I had to hide who I was in order to get my work. Uh, everyone I knew, everybody I worked with knew that, knew that I was gay. Um, and we were coming into a, a much more uh, open time, as it were. 
in the industry of more and more people being out and being successful. So I wasn't even overly scared. It was just still such a, such a, I think my biggest fear was that my sexuality would be the one main thing I talked about for the rest of my career once it was known. And at one level, I don't mind that because there's a lot to uncover there about the human condition and human experience through that conversation. And I'm, I, I'm good with that. Um, but we're still at a time as great as things are and as and better as things have gotten, that that still is a thing, you know, uh, once you're out, it's, it, it comes up a lot more than anybody else's sex life does <laughs> in entertainment. Um, uh, this is kind of an exception, obviously, we're talking about boys in the <laughs> But in general, uh, it comes up a lot more than other people's, I think, have to talk about their sexuality in interviews. Which is really upsetting because, like, I have never been asked about my sexuality. Um, I you're suppose... the thing out then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, it's true. Yeah, Brian, what impact did it have on you? Like, were you, were you afraid when you first started? Uh, the, the business or the film? Yeah, so, uh, uh, so uh, the, the, the business. Yeah, I mean, I think it took a while for me to be comfortable with myself. I mean, most of the people I, I feel like uh, that I was working with um, knew that I was gay, but I certainly maybe didn't lead with that. And so it did take a while for me to be completely comfortable. And I think once I was in my own life um, and uh, met somebody that I really wanted to be with, I was much more settled and comfortable with saying this is who I am and, and you know, not feeling at all like I needed to, you know, um, be circumspect about that. And Michael, do you feel like things have changed ever, like from your beginning to where you are now? Well, I, uh, when I was 21, I got Mamma Mia, the original Broadway company, and that was 2001, and I was straight out of drama school, playing the best friend slash understudy to the leading man. So I kind of got to go on one night uh, for Sky, and I sang this love song to this girl in my Speedo, and I'm like, this is the dream. This is what so many people are waiting for, and I'm like, this is it? Okay, and then I made a drag act that I did downtown at Joe's Pub on my nights off. So I think I never was in a closet. And I also know that black actors have a very different journey than white actors. Nobody's popping out of a bush to find out who Billy Porter or Titus Burgess is dating. So I never felt that kind of pressure cooker that all of my white male friends did. I just didn't have that. Jim, um, you performed this night after night for about 80 performances. Then you came and you did the film. Then you've done the junket. But I'm afraid this is it. The boys in the band. The band is finally splitting. How does that feel to go, this is the end of this, not of your friendship, but of this project? Yeah. Um, it's certainly a bittersweet when you put it like that, the idea that we won't be happily forced to do things together as a group or to talk about Mart's work anymore or the work that Joe Mantello did with us. You know, these are all such seminal moments in so many of our careers that it's just a sheer pleasure to recollect and go over it and be asked questions about it. For that same reason though, it has been a major experience that will stick with me in a way that Sadly, but it's just a fact of life. Not every project does. Most projects don't quite like that. And yeah. this one has been a life-changing one in that way that it, it will never go away. Um, it, it has changed my trajectory in one way or another. And so I'll always be feeling the, the wake of that, of that speedboat that this experience has been. Well, I'm glad that you've all got to have that experience and that you're letting us um, have our own experience with the film. So for that, I say thank you. Oh, thank you very much.